Whether you're in front of the camera or behind the scenes, you know that live streaming is a process. If you're just getting started or you've been doing this for quite some time, you already know that there is a lot that goes into it. In this video, I'm going to share with you three reasons that I actually quit live streaming and the one solution that brought me back to live streaming on a regular and consistent basis. Hey, what's going on everybody? Monty Weaver here, and I wanna help you not quit live streaming because we know the power of video. Video allows you to earn that no like, and trust factor with complete strangers so quickly. And if you start live streaming and really tapping into video, you're going to see the results of it. Now, when I got started live streaming back in 2016, I know it's been a while, I got started when Facebook just introduced their live streaming platform. I've always wanted to do high quality, something of a production value, but do it at a consumer level. So what I began to do was seek out all these tools and resources to be able to put together a high quality broadcast to go live to Facebook and also to Periscope, which happened to be my favorite platform. Now, after going live on these platforms for a few years, I actually got to the point where I stopped live streaming. I quit live streaming, but I wanna share with you the three reasons why how they could have been prevented so that you don't run into these issues. Let's get started with the first one. Now, one of the reasons that I actually stopped live streaming is because of the overall process. Here's what I mean. Live streaming is more than just hitting the record button. There is a process that goes into it from start to finish. You have to think about the time that you're going to allocate to pre-production. That means outlining what your live stream is going to be about, maybe coordinating with interview guests to make sure that you have a day and a time coordinated together, making sure that they can log in and have access, testing out your systems throughout the process. You also want to think about any type of multiple equipment that you'll need if you're doing a multi-camera shoot. All of this is pre-production before you even hit live. So the time commitment is actually gonna be longer than just your live broadcast. Now you don't wanna forget about post-production, especially if you're in a small space that requires you to take down your equipment, maybe move those tripods and move those lights into a corner because that time is essential to your process as well. Now, if you fail to allocate the proper amount of time for this entire process, you may find yourself easily getting to that state of burnout, which is one of the main reasons a lot of people will quit live streaming. Now, another reason that I actually stopped live streaming, and it may sound kind of weird considering the fact that I am a techie, is because of all of the tech. The more equipment that you have in your setup, the more troubleshooting that you may have to do, the more issues that could potentially arise. So if you're just getting started off, don't try to get all the equipment that you see everybody else use. Keep it simple so that you can stay consistent. Now, the typical average live streamer is not going to be changing equipment all the time. Mainly a lot of my equipment is to show you different ways to produce a live stream because each scenario is different. So making sure that you just have the essentials for your live stream and not getting overwhelmed by all the equipment will help prevent you from quitting live streaming. Now, before I get into the third reason of why I quit live streaming and that tool that really brought me back to live streaming on a consistent basis, I want you to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you hit that like button if any of these has been one of the reasons that you've even thought about quitting so far. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. When we live stream, we want to see a growing audience. That is the third reason why I actually quit live streaming is because I was live streaming consistently on the Facebook platform, but I wasn't growing an audience. For some reason, the numbers never seem to go up. So as you are live streaming, I want you to consider your platform of choice because I noticed that YouTube was a great platform for me to live stream on. In the very first year of being on YouTube, I was able to go from zero to 15,000 plus subscribers in that one calendar year. So making sure that you see your audience growth is one of those motivating factors to stay consistent. But because I didn't see it at the time, it was one of those reasons that I quit live streaming, 
but it allowed me to revamp my whole live streaming process, my strategy, and now I'm back to doing it consistently. So what is that tool that had me get back into live streaming and do it on a consistent basis? Well, like I mentioned earlier in the video, simplicity is a good thing especially when it comes to your equipment, but it can also be a very good thing when it comes to your software. So one of the softwares that I use that is super easy to use is called Melon. Anytime you introduce potential roadblocks and hurdles into your overall live streaming process, it's gonna give you another reason to hit the quit button rather than the record button. And when it comes to software, I've used some of the most basic softwares to some of the most advanced softwares. And there is a huge difference between what they're capable of doing and more importantly, who they're built for. Most of you need a simple platform that allows you to get going fast and quick and makes it easy for everything that you want to do to produce a high quality live stream. That is why I want to share with you a little behind the scenes of the Melon software, because that is one of the reasons that I got back to live streaming consistently. The platform is simple. It's easy to use. It's web based, which means I can access it from any computer in the world. And it's great for beginners that are just getting started because the learning curve is super low. And it also has the advanced features that I like, especially things like interview broadcasts, because those can be really hard to set up sometimes on some of the more complex platforms. Let's look at the computer. I wanna walk you through some of the basics of the platform, some of the updates that they recently made, because I really think that if you use a platform like this, you won't quit live streaming. This platform can be accessed from any computer that has an internet connection. Again, one of the main reasons that it's my go-to software for live streaming and even just recording a video session as well. Check the pin comment section. You can get started for free with Melon using that link in that pin comment section. Now that I'm logged in, I'll be prompted with some prompts to let me know of any updates, any new things that have come out using the platform. Make sure that you check those out because they're constantly rolling out new improvements to the software. So one of the basic things that you're gonna be able to do very easily is add your microphones and your cameras. So in the very bottom, we'll start with our microphone and you can see that I already have my audio meter moving, which means my microphone is already connected. And in this case, it is my cam link which is connected to my computer. Now we want to also check out our video. So my video is currently the cam link. So I repositioned the camera right behind me. So I'm connected directly in. And you can also see that I have a little animation going on because I was playing with some of the background templates, which they've added even more of. So there are a lot of different elements that you can bring into your live stream to make it even that much better. Now, we also have in the bottom the share option. So if you wanna share your screen, you can do that and you can go up to 1080p. I love using 1080p, so if your internet bandwidth allows for it, definitely wanna stream and record which is the next one at 1080p. Now, one of the features that I like about this is that ability to record because this software allows you to do more than just go live. So maybe you want to practice going live. You can actually hit the record button, go back, view the footage, or you can actually do some screen sharing do a whole tutorial lesson and you don't have to pay for any other software. You can simply record everything inside of the Melon platform. Additionally, we can go live. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the go live button and you can see that I already have some configuration set up for my social media platforms. And if you need to add any additional, you can easily just select your destination, add destination, and there's already pre-populated social media platforms that you can connect your existing accounts to. This is the easiest way to go live. So make sure that you set that up and connect. If you want to just record only, you can see here that you can just select record only. Give your title to your recording and that way you can easily access it in the recordings library. One of the ways to make your live stream more engaging and make the time go by a little bit faster is to do an interview. Now I've done a lot of interviews over the last few weeks on my weekly live show using the Melon software. Melon has a bunch of different templates so you can bring in multiple guests and it's easy for them because all they have to do is use the link 
that you shared with them to be able to be brought into the broadcast. Melon handles all the audio, so all they have to do is set up their audio and their video the same way we selected it inside of the platform. So in order to invite your guests, we'll simply click on the invite guests at the top left. We'll be prompted with a code. We'll copy the code and send that to our guests via messenger or email. If you need to create a new code, we can select on generate new link and this will generate a brand new link for you. So we'll select invite and now we have a brand new link that we can send out. Over on the right hand side of the software is where everything really happens. This is where you'll be able to change all kinds of different elements for your live stream to really make you stand out. The first aspect is the design. This is where there are multiple themes that you can select from. You can be able to preview these before you even make those go live. You can change the font colors to match your fonts and branding. You can change your colors for everything and really have this to be a customized live stream broadcast for your liking. The next section is the text section. And this is where I like to spend a lot of time creating the different lower thirds that I'm gonna have for my broadcasts. So in my live weekly shows, I like to have the title display and I also like to shout out Melon because they're a great company and they have got behind and sponsored my live stream broadcast. So I wanna make sure that in the text, I add a banner and to simply add a banner, we just select add new. We'll type in YouTube video and select add. And now we have our different banners ready to go and be displayed during our broadcast. So at any time I'm ready to display a lower third, they're already curated. I, all I have to do is select show and it will show it on the screen. Now, if you don't need the lower third anymore, such as YouTube video, I'm not gonna really use that one. All I have to do is select the delete button and it will remove it from the banner section. Now you really wanna think about the number of banners that you're gonna use because you don't wanna overwhelm this section. And again, simple is more because the less that you have to deal with, the easier it will be to quickly see which banner it is that you want to select. Now just below that, you can also add a ticker, which is also pretty cool as well. I have a ticker just above my head there. And that ticker allows you to know that I go live here on YouTube every single Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next section we wanna take a look at is the video section. Now, this is where you can have your countdown timers or other videos that you may wanna reference throughout your live stream. Now, I'm a big fan of using countdown timers because it allows your audience time to actually show up to the broadcast. But if you don't wanna worry about video editing or creating your own timers, Melon already has timers available for you. These are 30 second countdown timers that you can use and it allows you to get ready before you actually go live. It also allows you to know that you're actually live because one of the worst things when watching a live stream is waiting for someone to check all their systems while they're live. During the countdown timer, you'll be able to hear and visually see that everything is working. So make sure you take advantage of the countdown timers or your custom countdown timers if you want that more branded live stream feel. Now I know some of you all have navigated to the green screen and the custom backdrops. That's not my thing, but if it's yours, you can even add custom green screen backgrounds. Now there are some that are already here and it's so easy to add a background. All you do is drag and drop into the upload new background section and it will be easily available for you. And then once you have your background, you just select your background select I understand, and your background will be live on the screen. Like I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to go 1080p resolution. So you wanna make sure that in this next section, the settings, that you have everything selected properly to maximize your live stream. You can set 1080p, you can select to record, which is great to have your own backup copy because there have been times where I have gone live and the live stream has stopped, not any, fault of the platform, but the social media platform itself may have had an issue. So having a backup recording is always a good thing. You can also list out your participant names. This is great when you're having interviews so you know that who is talking and which speaker is which. You can show the names on screen. You can also have the different audio statuses show so that you know whether or not a participant is actually unmuted or not unmuted. Uh, how embarrassing is it when someone starts talking and their mic is muted? But with Melon, you can be able to tell 
and let them easily know, hey, you need to turn on your mic because there's also a hidden chat feature just between you and the interviewee. Now, if you really want to grow your live stream audience, you really want to think about planning ahead and Melon has the ability to schedule your live streams in advance. This is found on the far right tab, schedule, and then I can select the plus sign and schedule, and it allows me to select the destination that I plan to go live to. In this case, I'll select YouTube, we'll select next. You can either go live or a pre-recorded video. Now, in most cases, I go live, so I would select live stream and next, and then I can schedule the date and time of the live stream. So we'll select February and we'll do 1.58 PM. We'll do something a little bit different. We want to stand out and we'll say test live stream. We can also put in our YouTube description. Typically I'll log into my YouTube account and just copy and paste this information because it's pretty consistent. I have a specific format that I like to use. We can select our YouTube category and then we can also select a thumbnail image simply by dragging and dropping it into the platform. So make sure that you have all your assets ready to go to schedule your broadcast because that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. Once you have everything done here, you'll just schedule your broadcast and you will see it show up and ready to go in Melon. So now I'm sure that you will stay consistent and not quit when it comes to live streaming. We've made the process simple, we've made the equipment simple, and we've made the software simple. We're eliminating the hurdles and we're eliminating the roadblocks. Now, if you got value from this video, make sure you check out the other videos here on the page as we dive deeper into live streaming and the equipment to really make you stand out. Make sure you check out the next one and I look forward to seeing you there.